A reminder, try watching these videos on the big screen, on a television. I really sweat the photography details, one of the many reasons why people subscribe to this channel, and you should too. The Cadillac CTS was a car that never fully got the recognition it deserved, more athletic than people who skipped the test drive would ever understand, especially the amazing V model. CTS has been replaced by the CT5. Squint and tell me the 5 doesn't look like an S, right? And looky here, it's wearing my favorite letter. Not just because my last name starts with it. Cadillac V cars have historically run side by side with BMW M and Mercedes AMG models. In other words, they're a blast on empty country roads, even better on a track where they can be fully wound out. Keep in mind, this is not the super cool Nito ultra high performance car it used to be. Cadillac is sort of rejiggering the V lineup. This is similar to what was called V Sport before. If you want the full on fire breathing effect, you're going to want to wait for the CT5 V Blackwing. If your commute involves the Nürburgring, then yeah, there's an advantage, but the V here will bring a lot of enthusiasts, a lot of happy. Starting at about $48,700, it's priced aggressively against the smaller BMW M340i and Mercedes AMG C43 by an average of eight grand. Audi S4 is closer, but still a couple thousand more. My tester has $16,000 worth of options. The $6,300 Platinum package adds this glass roof, extra fancy leather seats, and many other things. At $4,200, the premium package buys better lighting, punchier bow sound, and navigation. Total prices tested, 65 large. None of the add-ons boost performance, only weight. A completely base model would be a compelling car for drivers wanting a good time. The CTS V 0 to 60 was a three and a half second affair. This one, 4.6. So if you need the extra oomph, yeah, wait for the black wing. But this one, not too shabby. Gotta say, I love the snap, crackle, pop of the exhaust. It's not a V8, but it still sounds good. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get to what motivates the V. It's a 3-liter twin-turbo V6 with little to no lag when punching the go pedal on specified premium gas. GM rates it at 360 horsepower and 405 pound-feet of torque. CT5V weighs just shy of 4,000 pounds. Normally a rear drive sedan, this one has the optional all wheel drive at two grand. An electronic limited slip rear differential is standard, so is the latest generation of magnetic ride control dampers. There's a 10, uh, yeah, 10 speed transmission. It's not a dual clutch, but shifts are solid, quick, and can be done manually if you want. Brakes are four piston Brembos, front and rear. Of course, there are drive modes. Cadillac goes a little further in its custom setting, allowing the driver to set brake pedal response. On the track, performance traction management lets you dial in the weather conditions to optimize performance around the course. Apparently, it really helps, but hard to tell on public roads. If the CT5 doesn't lure drivers onto tight, twisty roads, it's only because their co-pilots are prone to motion sickness. Solo romps at the crack of dawn on Sunday mornings would be worth the lack of sleep. As far as all-wheel drive goes, I'm not sure it's needed, but I haven't driven a rear-drive CT5V. I've said it before, I'll say it again, General Motors does not get its due when it comes to handling dynamics. This car is a joy to throw into corners. Very neutral, very little body roll or dive. Steering weight is about perfect. Nicely done. There's road feel happening here. The V is a tactile machine. It communicates. The structure is steel girder solid. Overall, it feels a touch hefty. The size is good too, slotting in between a BMW 3 and 5 series, uh, leaning towards the fiver. This would be a terrific grand touring car. It eats up miles effortlessly. Because of the magnetic ride control dampers, the ride quality versus handling is about perfect in this car. It's comfortable, yet it handles terrific. Uh, 
One thing though, this being a Cadillac, you'd expect it to be quiet, but you know, put your foot into the throttle and there is more engine noise than you might imagine. Uh, that's not an entirely bad thing in a car like this. That sound is piped in through the speakers and it's adjustable, so there's that. And it's good enough so that I largely left the Bose audio system off. Even with performance tires, I didn't notice much road noise. The paddles fire off nice, crisp manual shifts, but one thing, the ratios of the 10-speed are so closely grouped that sometimes it's kind of hard to decide which one to use. So I've just thrown it into automatic, which works great. Frankly, it's the mode that I would choose when driving really hard. There are plenty of other cars that get better fuel economy than the CT5V. That's not the mission here. The EPA rates the average at 21 miles per gallon. I didn't get a reliable real world average, but if that's your biggest concern, maybe this car isn't for you. Brakes. People forget how important those are, especially in a performance car. These have excellent modulation. Excellent stopping power, and the seatbelt cinches up for stability. Uh, one thing, this car does have an automatic engine start-stop system. General Motors is finally putting a button here so you can turn it on and off easily. Thank you. Standard safety includes automatic emergency braking, blind spot monitoring, lane departure warning, rear parking sensors, and rear cross traffic alert. Adaptive cruise control comes with the driver assist package at around two grand. And Super Cruise will be available, but you're gonna have to wait a bit. One of my biggest gripes with Cadillac has been the interiors. Good to see GM investing resources here. Cheap looking plastics are pretty much banished. Materials look and feel Cadillac worthy. Even hard plastics have a tactile feel to them. This being a V model, I think the vibe should be a little bit more aggressive. It's kind of sedate for a sports sedan. Small touches like this phone slot are nice. There's a power cord path through below or just go for the wireless charging pad. Toasty wheel, uh, yep. Heated and vented chairs are not overly bolstered. Good for bigger drivers, but smaller pilots might want more lateral support for hard driving. There are all kinds of apps that can be installed so you can catch up on weather or news. GM also has a marketplace where you can shop, maybe order dinner for pickup on the way home after a long day at work, assuming you still head into the office these days. Not exactly what I'd call Cadillac grade restaurants, but there you go. Door pockets have soft lining, so sunglasses don't rattle. Love the feel of these. Details like this are important in a car in this price range. It's not perfect. Cup holders are kind of shallow, so if you're picking up big drinks at Domino's, don't drive too aggressively the rest of the way home. There's ambient lighting in all four doors, but not on the instrument panel. BMW and Mercedes do that much better. Controls are straightforward, especially these piano key buttons. Another wrong righted is the Cadillac user experience or Q. It was once a touchscreen only system and laggy at that. It's now snappy and responsive. Plus there are a few knobs. Plus there's a console knob for those who don't want fingerprints on the screen. Something for everyone. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are standard. The bird's eye camera system gets a lot of different angles and the optional self parking system does a faster, better job than most humans. Yes, even you. So wheelbase is 116 inches, now up by one and a half. Must be a lot of leg room back there, huh? Yeah, I'm not so concerned about that. We're both five foot nine and headroom is a little tight back here. I have that much. Knee and leg room, not a problem. Uh, foot room is a little tight for my size 11s. Uh, the cushions are very comfortable. Thigh support is great. You could actually drop these down an inch so I could have more headroom. The pockets are not lined like the ones in front. That's not a big deal. Okay, people laugh when I complain that there's only one seat pocket back here, but hey, I live back here. Power ports, uh, not an issue, but uh, no climate control back here. Or heated seats. This is a Cadillac. The drive shaft tunnel, pretty substantial. Combine that with a raised seating position here, and I will rate this back seat as very comfortable for two adults, just so long as they're not too long in the torso. Otherwise, they're gonna bump their heads. 
I'm a big design guy, so let's go there next. Cadillac continues to borrow elements from the Escala show car. That's a good thing. The front integrates well. Vertical DRLs instantly tell the world this is a caddy. I'm not as crazy about the rear quarter. This cut line interrupts the flow. Taillights may not be the same shape as the infamous BMW 7 Series, but the flow of the deck lid has a good dollop of bangle butt in it. This tear duct element is close to what Honda has been doing on Accord for a while. That said, it got more compliments than any car I've driven in the last six months. And check this out, the lines of the back strongly resemble the shape of the Cadillac logo, a nice subtle touch. Kick to open trunk lids are great if you've got an arm full of squirming toddler or you're overstocking on this stuff like everybody seems to be doing these days. CT5's cargo hold is not huge. Move to a crossover to haul big things. The split seats help, but the opening is on the smaller side. No ski pass through either. The battery's back here. That helps for weight distribution. Run flat tires mean no spare. Uh, that's not uncommon nowadays, but I don't have to like it. The CT5 is better at hauling butt than hauling stuff. I can just squeeze five packs of the two ply in here, but that last bundle, yeah, I'm gonna have to buy that one since it needs some serious scrunching to pack in. So let's break down the Cadillac CT5V with red light, green light. Green lights, what a great driver's car. It pushes all the right buttons. Enthusiasts are cheating themselves if they dismiss it. From the materials to the interface, the cabin is a clear improvement, and it's kind of a bargain, significantly less than M340i and AMG C43. Yellow lights, oh, the cabin is nice, but not as appealing as the Mercedes, especially the ambient lighting. Also, shouldn't it look more aggressive for a V model? There are run flat tires, but no spare. Red lights. The busy rear quarter design doesn't match the cohesive front. Rear headroom might be tight. Tall families should check that out. And the trunk is kind of small. If I haven't made myself perfectly clear, the CT5V should be on the test drive list. If you enjoy driving, it hits the sweet spot. And again, a base model is all that's needed here and might be the best way to go. So do you need the black wing? Should you wait for it? Well, consider this. The CT5V is a brilliant car, fun to drive, and really it's so capable. You can't really explore the upper limits of this car on public roads safely or legally. There's truth to that old chestnut that it's more fun to drive a slow car hard than a fast car easy. Not that there's a lack of gusto here. Balanced and refined, the Cadillac CT5V is performance bliss for the real world. Some behind the scenes stuff before I get to the fun fact. If you enjoy the photography, here's one reason why. Martin Campbell and I got up early to shoot the CT5V because we think a great car deserves great visuals. We enjoy doing good work. It took nearly five hours to do the running footage between the regular camera, GoPro, and drone shots. I'm not trying to be a killjoy by saying you can't explore the limits of this car on public roads. It's true, it's incredibly capable. Plus, you never know what might be hiding around a fun, tight turn. On this shoot, Martin came around a corner to find a Ram 1500 squarely in his lane. Thank goodness for great breaks. As a news photographer back in the day, I covered more than my share of tragic events due to poor decisions. Enough said. And uh, something I got on camera in the background at Costco. Now watch the delivery truck unloading car wash chemicals. You've got arms full of squirming top. Well, that didn't work out the way I think he hoped. <laughs> oh, I think that deserves an instant well, replay. <laughs> Slow mo. Great if you've got arms full of squirming top. Ugh, I had a whole week like that recently. Uh, everything that's happening in this country is wearing many of us down. Don't be afraid to acknowledge that, uh, but don't be afraid to take charge of things and make the world better. 
Time for the closing fun fact. One of the infinite reasons why people subscribe to this channel and click the notifications bell. Let's talk about the Cadillac logo. Uh, so much to discuss here. One of the most redesigned logos in automotive history. Originally, it was based on the family crest of French explorer and supposed nobleman Le Sueur Antoine Cadillac. Uh, for the longest time, it had ducks. Six of them, in fact. Three on one side representing the mother Mother's lineage and the other three representing the father's noble lineage. They're gone now, uh, maybe because of the cartoon Katera duck. Remember the caddy that zigs? Um, also, uh, the crown, that's gone now too. Around the turn of the century, the logo got modernized. No crown, no ducks, but the laurel wreath symbolizing victory and aristocracy, uh, that remained. The color stripes mean something. Blue is valor, red boldness, gold riches, and black superiority. That badge is on my ELR, a 2014 model. In 2015 or so, the brand redid the logo again, simplifying it. Now, apparently the new logo is sort of inspired by the modern painter Mondrian. I always thought some scallops here on the edge to symbolize the laurel leaves would have been nice, but uh, that's just the armchair graphic designer in me. And notice that I said uh, supposed noblemen. Apparently, there is some evidence that Cadillac fled France under less than ideal conditions. But history, we'll never really know. Well, thanks for watching. Remember, subscribe to this channel, click notifications. We have a great time here. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.